Well, Richard, behind us, Rhythm Master. We saw him in the Greenham at Newbury. What do you make of his run that day? Well, hand on heart, I was a fraction disappointed. Um, but to be fair, it was a finding out mission for me. Um, I mean, John was, was was quite keen to keep him off the faster ground, and I'm a big believer you don't know until you try. Well, John was right, and I was wrong there. I thought he, he was beside the winner, and he was picking up, and, and PJ just felt that the ground was just quick enough to. At least we'd learn something from it. Um, and he's come out of the race quite well, as you can see. But we'll definitely keep him off the, the quicker stuff. But uh, walk away from there. What are you going to do trip-wise with him now? Did you know where you stand? Uh, it's, it's a little bit tricky. Uh, he's not working like a sprinter. So seven furlongs a mile is, is, is where we'll be aiming. I mean, he's, he's in the Irish Guineas. He's in a couple of early closing races, so we'll, we'll, we'll monitor it. But I think the ground is more important. Well, it's not more important than the trip, the same as the trip. But uh, seven furlongs a mile we'll be, we'll be aiming at. And races like the, the Jersey Stakes, as you somebody mentioned, seven furlongs, which you've had a success in before. You, you'd love to think if it came up a bit juicy that day, no, that's, that's definitely a target. Um, but we'll just monitor him now. He's a horse that gives himself a hard time at the races. He's, he's a little bit on it. And when I say on it, he, he's, sort of, he's just on edge. And uh, he came back quite light from it now. You, you can tell he'd been away, but he's, he's, he's bounced back well now. So we're happy with him. But, some of his farm was very good, but he, he will be competing at the top level, so let's hope he can win one or two or three of them. Yeah. Richard, Toro Strike, on the board already this season at Thirsk. Yeah, it's, uh, it's been a lucky race for us, that. Um, just we, we've been struggling sort of this season, the ground's been so dry, we've been struggling to get him on the grass, and you know, and uh, probably the tracks are where the best grass is at the moment because they're heavily watered. So I decided I'd stick him in, it was a last minute entry. Uh, stick him in rather than gallop him, I'd, I'd send him to Thurston and get, get, get a day into him. But I thought he was very impressive. I was, you know, it was probably the performance of his life. But he's, he is quite a likely race colt and he's been quite immature and he's just starting to grow into a man now. So he, he's, he's a progressive type. Now, so we're, we were impressed. He's, a, he's good and he's on the upgrade. Where are you going to go with him now then? <laughs> he's got an entry in the Lockinge, which is shooting at the stars. Uh, as you know, the sponsors, Sancho Cab, sponsored the, the lock in, so we did put him in. I uh, discussed it with Alison. Um, we'll, we'll have a look at the race any other time. Just sometimes, uh, you know, if the top horse didn't run well, you might, you might think about uh, giving him a go for, for the sponsors. But at the moment, no real plans, but that's, that's where he's here, Mike. Right and do you think there's progress to come from first? You said in your column you didn't think you thought he might just need it that day. As I say, I, I sent him to the races rather than sort of giving them a gallop the week after. So, because Thursk is very handy for us. They've done a good job walking the lad, walked the track and it was a good nick. So I, uh, I decided to run him. But I'm not so sure if he was a little bit flatter that day. They went very quick and of course we were not minded and just thinking he might just need it. But he definitely has come on a ton and got for, for other runs. So he is progressive. So Richard Pythagoras, we saw him at Epsom in the Blue Ribbon Trial and he ran well there. Yeah, we're pleased with him. Um, it, it was on quickish ground again, I'm afraid. It's, uh, we've had a very dry spell, as you know. Um, and he had to carry a listed penalty for winning the listed race of Ponty. But it, it was... The uh, plan wasn't to go out and make it. Uh, he sort of hit the lids and ran a little bit fresh, but... and walked last hundred yards. But Paul was pleased with him, and... I mean, he coughs at the ground, but... I think if it got to extreme conditions, I, I, I think that would play into his strengths. Uh, it's amazing when you watch that race initially, I thought, well, he, he, he doesn't stay, but when, when I look back on it, I mean, he could, he could stay extreme distances on pedigree, he's got every chance, doesn't mind a bit of juice in the ground, but he's a horse that's tough enough to place because of his listed win, um, but, I mean, he's got an entry in the Dante, and uh, Mr. Robert's very keen to go there. So we'll, we'll see what happens after that. And what do you do with a three-year-old cult like this, at this stage where you're, you're still learning, still finding out? Will it, will it take you a while to realise exactly what it is? Is he one of those? Um, well, I can really say from last year, his work is a lot better this year. He's done extremely well, he's grown and matured and generally means they're progressing and getting better. Um, it's a fact-finder mission, I mean, it'll be tough enough in the down team, but we'll, uh, we'll make some sort of plan later on. He's, he's not a bad horse. He's a trial and a gentleman. <laughs> Richard, you had many good sprinters on your hands in recent years. Ventura Rebel, the flag wearer for 2021? Yeah, he, uh, he's he had a mixed year last year. Uh, ran a cracker at Royal Ascot. And then it sort of went downhill a little bit. He's had a few little niggly problems, but we seem to have ironed him out now this year. He's been out a bit. 
Um, and he ended up, I think his last race he won a Group 3. So he's, he's rated sort of 108, 107. You know, but he needs to improve a little bit, but you know, we're, we're excited about him this year. He's been training really well and we're very happy with him. So obviously they say it's hard for three-year-old sprinters. It's often the five-year-old season's a better one for them. Does that give you hope with him going into oh, this? Definitely, yeah. He, um, he's, I don't know what it is about him this year. He just seems a different horse. Uh, he's more comfortable in himself and he's, you know, we're able to train him harder this time now. And uh, He's taken as well. And he'll start in, in the Duke of York as long as the ground's not like concrete. I'm sure William Darby won't have that. But uh, he'll, uh, he got an entry at Royal Ascot as well. So we're still we're still holding the flag for him now. He likes Ascot as well. So I think he's won there. I think he's been placed twice as well, I think, so at Royal Ascot. So uh, no, he's an exciting horse. Richard Space Traveller, some really good form. Yeah, uh, I suppose as well, Ascot winners, not many of them about. Um, and then luckily he won the Group 2 in Ireland, the Clippers race, the Ireland race, which was fantastic. And then he had a little bit of a setback last year, he only ran the once. Um, and his comeback run was very ordinary now. I, was, I wasn't thinking he was going to win or anything, but I felt he'd, he'd run a decent race. And he was extremely disappointing. But he has been training better. Um, I mean, the plan was to run the Lockinge, but... It only looks 50-50 at the moment. Um, but the beauty with him sort of this year is we just need to get his confidence back and get him back, back on the right track. Uh, he doesn't have any group penalties this year, so that there'll be smaller races that we can aim him at and hopefully, hopefully get him back rolling. And uh, I mean, high in the agenda would be the Clipper race again at Leperstone. Um, so that's, that's a long way down the road. But hopefully we can get him back in good order and he can have a good season. And ground-wise, what, what is it Space Traveller needs? Um, I, I don't think he wants it too firm. Um, but um, a little bit undecided, but not too firm, definitely. And I don't think he wants it too soft. Just just beautiful ground. Really. Richard, vintage Clavitz is flying the flag for the two-year-olds at the minute. What a start he's made. Yeah, it's been, it's been fantastic. Um, keep mentioning the weather, I apologise, but... He hadn't been on grass. I saw they made him favourite for the Brocklesby and I thought, well, if he wins the, he wins the Brocklesby, he's going to improve a ton now. But he's, from day one, he's been a natural sort of easy, easy horse to train. And three runs already, he looks, looks fantastic. Um, but the Brocklesby ran very green and then he, I mean, he improved again at Beverly. And then, funny enough, one of the lads, Jocks, had a sit on him the other day. He says, look, this horse has even got better, you know. So he, he's pretty smart. But it's always nice to show a two-year-old that's won three before, before the end of May, which is great. You know? Fantastic. Fantastic. Inevitably, Inevitably, people like me start, start thinking, thinking why Ascot. Ascot. Do the, train the, train the train connections the connection start thinking that? Like? Yeah, we do. You know, he's, uh, I think the Johnson horse is pretty smart. He beat the other day. He's given him weight. Any, any horse that carries, carries a penalty and wins like he did is, is, is pretty smart. Uh, you find out he'd probably run the national stakes and, and then we'll decide where we go. You know, I felt he was a six-furlong horse now, so... If, if he is, he's, he's pretty good. If it's your first season, season sire, sire in our dad, you bought him yourself at the sales. For, 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 for these young studies, to get the horse like this in his first crop, they must have been in the hand of the stud. Yeah, it's fantastic for them, because our dad would have been a sort of, I'm not being rude about him, but he wouldn't have been top of the, the first season sirens, but he's made a fantastic start. If, uh, if, if they can win and run like this guy, I'll, I'll buy a few more, you know. Richard, Uncle Thum, um, which he appeared in the Fed Darling at, at Newbury. What, what was your thoughts on that? Yeah, initially, <laughs> she, she'd been slowly away most of her starts last year. So we'd done a bit of work with her in the stalls and, you know, we were always happy with her coming out then, but she's, when she got to the races, but anyway, Paul made sure she got out and anyway, of course, she ran a little bit too free and sort of walked past 100 yards. But at least it drew a line through the, the guineas which was grand because she, you know, she, she struggled to get home there and we'll probably go back sprinting with her now and see what happens. We've got a fella here who's placed in the Chivley Park, Group 1 at, at 2. Did she surprise you with how far she got? She was a breeze up by, wasn't she? Yeah, she, uh, she was bought uh, Doncaster of Tally Hostood, I think they bred her. Um, she, she kept surprising me all year. Um, she, she's a... She's not a affiliate that overexpressed herself at home, but always works well. She'd, she'd always sit with her companion, but she would never go clear or do anything scintillating. But every time she ran, you always felt she was going to get better and better, and she was doing it the hard way, as I say, giving them a head start and still picking them up. Um, and then, she, of course, she won the Group 3 in, in there, um, giving them a head start again. 
and some of our sectionals are, are sensational. So I'm hoping, hoping she has a good season. It's going to be tougher. She's got a group three penalty. It's not going to be an easy race for her. But uh, we get our back sprinting and see what happens.